Hey everyone, it's Bonnie in Quiltville, and we are on to part three of our Unity Quilt Along during our quilting quarantine um, weeks while we've been sheltering at home. And this week is a favorite of mine. I absolutely adore Sawtooth Stars, and this is my favorite, favorite size. They are four inches finished. You're going to need 36 of them, and I wanted to share with you my essential triangle tool method of cutting the triangles, and then we'll go over to the sewing machine and I will show you how to stitch flying geese the essential triangle tool way. The package looks just like this when you receive it, and when you purchase your essential triangle tool. It comes with a fold out booklet of instructions with full color photos and you'll also get a free bonus buddy ruler with this that will help you set your seam allowance. It's got holes in the uh, bonus buddy for quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, and five eighths inch seam allowances so that you can set your seam allowance to do whatever you'd like it to do. This bonus line right here is key in saving bonus triangles from stitch and flip corners into a usable size for an extra project. So far this mystery, we have not done those, but it's a nice bonus to have on hand just for setting your quarter inch seam. When you get your ruler out of the package, it's going to look much like this. And I love to use the non-stick, or sorry, it is stick. What is this stuff called? This is bandage tape. It's a it's a micro pore bandage tape for anti ruler slip. Oh, you guys, this the whole staycation at home for months and months on end is getting to me. Anyway, you can use the bandage tape on the back side of your ruler that will help with to keep your ruler from slipping. Now with these little stars, we're gonna need four sets of flying geese for each, and you can tell by these stars that I have kept the background consistent in each star and I have used one red for four star points and one aqua for the other four star points. The center squares came out of my two and a half inch um, scrap user system squares box so it was really fun to go through that box and pull up different blues that would work with these fabrics. Everything that we've done so far has come from scrap user system sizes. So what we need for the flying geese for this block is a background strip, inch and a half, and a red strip, inch and a half, and an aqua strip, inch and a half. No shorter than six and a half inches. In fact, this one was left from our previous leader and ender project a couple of years ago, checkerboard rails. And I can get the four half square triangle pairs needed out of a six and a half inch strip. So that's just a size to keep in mind. You don't need to measure first before you do this. But what I'm going to do here is I like to cut through two layers and we're gonna cut, I'm gonna put this right sides together so that it's a little bit um, not so busy so that you can see the lines on the rulers, okay? The first thing, before we even cut quarter square triangles, I'm gonna grab my square ruler and I wanna cut four inch and a half squares from the inch and a half strip to use as corners of our block. So let me do that just really, really quickly. Um, if you've had a class with me before, or you've heard me lecture, or you followed along on our mysteries, you know that it's really important where you place the line on the ruler in relationship to your fabric. So I'm gonna be using this inch and a half line right here. And the line needs to go not next to the fabric sitting on the mat, but actually on top of the fabric at the edge of the fabric. You want to include that line in your cut. We're just going to cut four matching squares and get them out of the way so that we can cut our quarter square triangles. Okay, so the essential triangle tool is marked with red lines for half square triangles. We'll be using those next. And green lines for cutting quarter square triangles. We need four quarter square triangles that give us a one inch by two inch finished flying geese. 
if I take that longest side, the number two, that's the finished length of the flying geese. The number two is out here to my left. If I follow that line to the center, there's a cheat sheet of sizes that goes down the center of the ruler. That cheat sheet for the two inch size tells me it takes a one and a half inch strip. So I'm using the one and a half inch strip with the two inch line. And I am going to place this right here with the line on the fabric, not below it or above it. And you'll notice that the little dog ear of ruler is sticking up and above beyond the strip. And that's perfectly fine. That actually becomes a placement guide. I'm going to take one cut this way and I'm going to move my strip. And then I'm going to move my body sideways a little bit so that I'm not going to cross body cut across my fingers. And we're going to take off that little bit right there. So here's two of our triangles needed. Now if I just pivot my ruler, I can place that one and a half inch strip line for the two inch finished size right here and make my second cut. And if I were doing more stars out of this same background, I would just continue to pivot my ruler, point up, point down, point up, point down for as many star um, point backgrounds as I needed. But four is all I need, so I'm gonna set that aside. We've got our quarter square triangles cut. We've got our little square corners cut. And now we need to do the star points themselves. And I am going to put the aqua fabric on top because red lines don't show real well against red fabric. If I had black fabric, black lines wouldn't show real well either. So let's just place these right sides together. We're going to be cutting these in mirror image matched pairs, meaning with each cut, we're going to have one aqua star point and one red star point for either side of those quarter square triangles. And the first thing I need to do is get myself a good square cut on the end. So I'm going to just use any line on the ruler and get rid of those uneven ends. And because I'm a right-handed cutter, I'm going to move this now over to my left and cut from my left to my right. If you happen to be a lefty, you would be trimming up on your left and moving your clean cut over to your right side. And the only difference between righties and lefties is I will be using the ruler with the square corner to my upper left. Lefties would turn the ruler face down and put the square corner to their upper right. Other than that, we're both cutting from the outside towards the center. So it will be very much the same. This is going to be a one inch finished half square triangle. See this first line here has a number one right by it. That's the finished size. So that's the line that I'm going to put at the top of the strip set. And when I do this, you'll see that the line is on the fabric and that the green dog ear is hanging off below the strip set. Okay. We're going to be cutting these with one set of dog ears already trimmed off. That trimmed off dog ear becomes a placement guide for against the quarter square triangles that we have just cut. Okay. So I am going to cut four pairs. Here's my first pair. Leave your hand on the ruler. Move the strip set just a little bit. This way you're sure you got through any loose threads before you move the ruler and misalign anything. And we're going to just give it a complete pivot all the way around so that the green dog ear is now pointing up. And I'm going to slide that one inch line down to the bottom of the strip set, but it's going to be where? Still on top of the fabric, okay? And I'm going to make my second cut. There's only two positions of this ruler, up and down. So from this point, we're going to bring it all the way around again. Put that red first line, that's the one inch line at the top of the strip set. You're aligned at the side of your strip set there, and we're going to make this cut. That's our third set. And now I'm going to pivot this around again. And here you go. There's your number four. So this was about a six and a half inch strip. And I've only got this little piece left that I can't even get um, an inch and a half square out of. So that was the perfect strip size to use. Now this little guy, he's too small for this again. So what I'm going to do is grab my ruler while I've got this right here. And I'm going to see what inch and a half squares I can get out of this. Because I won't be able to get another star out of this. There's just not enough left. And this is how I tackle my scraps. As I cut out projects, anything left over gets cut down. These two little squares will go right into my inch and a half squares box for use in another project. Okay. 
Now we're going to take those quarter square triangles of background that we've cut. And I'm going to show you how this goes here. So you'll notice that there's a little blunt spot right here at the top of this triangle. Take your pair of star points and pull them apart. And you'll see their mirror image from each other. And they also have a flat spot that will correspond to the flat spot that's at the top of your quarter square triangle. Take your red one first. And we're going to do this at the sewing machine, but I just want to show you here how it goes first. And we will be sewing this way down the triangle, okay? And you will need a slightly scant seam. So what I suggest people do is take two two-inch squares. Sew them right sides together press to one side and measure across that two squares from side to side. If that measurement is three and a half inches, then you're gonna use that same exact seam allowance to sew here. That's be slightly scant to reach unit size. If your two squares sewn together is less than three and a half, that means your seam allowance is a little bit too big. So you wanna scant it down until you reach that three and a half inches on those two squares. Same thing, if your two squares are bigger than three and a half, your seam allowance is just a bit too skinny and you're gonna to wanna to fatten it up. When we add this triangle and it's sewn on, you'll be pressing that seam allowance towards the neutral quarter square triangle background, okay? Just for the first one, press it under. Then this one will be sewn on from bottom to top, and you'll press this one out. Are you ready to take this to the sewing machine? Let's do that. I'm gonna hit pause on this video, and we're gonna move the setup and take you over to the machine. Okay, so here we are at the machine, and I am ready to stitch these four flying geese that are going to be um, sewn into our star blocks. You can see that I have all of the red ones here out to my right and all of the aqua ones out to my left. Um, if you happen to get these reversed, it won't matter as long as you keep all of your star blocks the same. Um, but don't switch back and forth and have some with the aqua here and some with the red here and some um, with the red and some with the aqua here. They need to stay consistent for this design. Um, I also have here Things you may notice at my sewing machine setup, this is my 1957 Singer 301. I love it for straight stitching. And this is that bonus buddy ruler that has the holes to set for your quarter inch seam. The first hole is your quarter inch, then three eighths, then th three quarters, and then five eighths. Okay, so these are all the seam allowances that we tend to use um, with patchwork and sewing. If you don't have that, or if you just want to one to give to a friend to help them out with their quarter inch seam, this is my individual seam guide, and it has also holes from quarter inch to, to five eighths of an inch, so that you can put the needle in that quarter inch hole and have a starting point at where you need to set your seam allowance. What I've used here out to the side of my presser foot is a piece of old hotel room key, or credit card, or gift card, or whatever, with some double stick poster tape to hold it down. And what I love about this is it gives me a nice hard edge, but it's fairly flat. So if I'm doing stitch and flip corners, I don't have to pull this off in order to do a stitch and flip corner. And then I won't have to measure to put it back again. So this is kind of how I like to do my patchwork here. Again, you'll wanna do that squares test just to be sure. The rulers have enough wiggle room within those holes that you can fine tune based on the thickness of your fabric, the thickness of your thread, and how you cut that fabric, which may give you different results. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is sew the red ones on. I've got the triangle aligned here at the bottom and here at the diagonal, and you'll notice that a little bit of that dog ear sticks up beyond the back triangle, the base triangle. Just let it be there. One of the things I caution folks on is that we automatically wanna come right over to this point and start sewing at that point. And if your needle goes right in that point, you are sewing a full bodied fat figured quarter inch seam. And you've just adjusted yourself to sew a tiny bit scant. What that quarter inch really is, is where the fabric needs to fold to press up and over your thread. So your thread needs to be just next to that quarter inch, but not directly on it. As I place this here under my machine, 
I can tell that my needle hits just to the right of that point. And I'm going to sew here. Now you may notice my tulip block is my leader and ender back here. I've been working on these um, for a future project. It's spring. It's Easter time. We like tulips. So that's just going in my, my done pile. We're going to continue this chain right here. And I just align this. And just let that needle hit wherever it needs to. I'm more concerned about the fabric being up against my guide here than where the needle hits in relationship to that point, okay? All right, so we're gonna get this going here. And I love chain piecing. And you can use one star block as the leader and ender for your second one. Remember, we've got 36 of these to go. If you're mask making, Use the star units as your leaders and enders while making your masks in between. And I've been doing that this week. But right now, as leaders and enders, I've got tulip parts here. So I'm going to just sew parts of this little four patch in between. Okay. Now, we've got this little chain, and we're going to press it a little bit differently. Let me move these little aqua guys because they're right in my way. I am going to put it red triangles down. One of the questions I often get is on um, setting the seam. If it looks like the seam is curling at all, yes, I do set the seam. And we are going to press these little tiny red triangles toward the quarter inch or the quarter square triangle background. This is going to help distribute some of the bulk that happens at the center of a flying geese unit. I like to press them in opposite directions, one in and one out. And then I can just grab my scissors. It's a lot less fiddly if I leave them connected to each other. Now you might see, and if I can show you, let's stand up by my phone here, that there is just a tiny little bit of extra fabric right here. That's the, that's the dog ear part. And you can trim that with your scissors just along the edge of the base triangle. Okay, and then we remove the dog ear also. And we're gonna do that on all four of these. So if you have a little overage, that's because you were sewing a scant quarter inch seam, and that's what you need to do so that these turn out the right size. Okay, we're just gonna trim those guys and then get the dog ears off as we go. And the camera's kind of above my head, so I'm doing the stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down routine here. So thank you for your patience. That one's off. All right. Now, got a the thread there. Grab your aqua ones, and we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna align it along the bottom edge and that diagonal, and you will find that the flat spot on the aqua one is straight with the red triangle that you just added. This is a placement guide. These guys should be even right here, okay? And I know it feels tiny, but it's the same seam allowance as anything else. So let's go do one. And again, your seam is going to come out right next to that point, probably not directly on it. Just a thread or two off to the right of that point. Okay. What I love about having dog ears already trimmed off is that... I can snug these units right up next to each other as we chain them. If your pieces are curling, I love having the iron close just to flatten stuff out. Okay. And I can tell my red seam's in the right space because these guys are even all the way around. Okay. Come on, go under there. And we're also giving you the other option. Just like the previous units in this quilt, you can use rectangles and squares to do the stitch and flip method, or you can use your simply fo simple folded corners ruler to cut them first and sew them second. Whatever you'd like to do, we believe in options. It's not the method that you move, use that determines whether your quilt is a success or not. It's that you remember the unit size. So these are going to measure one and a half by two and a half before you sew them into the block. Once the block is sewn into the quilt, they're gonna measure one an inch by two inches, okay? So at this time, we're going to press 
the little aqua ones out. I usually have just a tiny bit of trimming to do on these because we're hand guiding. We're, there's always going to be a slight variation. We are not um, making, you know, dig digital quilts here that are always perfect. Okay, so there's our four. And I will trim this dog ear here. Let's take a look at this guy. All right, so is he small? <laughs> yeah. And I will take it to the the um, cutting table and I will trim a little bit. Sometimes I get just the slightest hint of a baggy bottom down here. So I will just need to straighten that out. But this will measure one and a half by two and a half before we sew it into the block. And then it will finish at one by two in the quilt. I hope you're having a great time uh, making our Unity blocks. And for our Unity quilt, uh, it's a great way to kind of gather together at this weird time in the world when we are all staycationing at home and we're on what week three or week four of being sequestered at home so being able to share this with you has been a joy and a privilege for me and I can't wait for you to see what rows come next thanks everybody we'll catch you later bye